My name is Bill Westmoreland. I'm the 2014 past president of AICHE. And I'm here with Bill Van Holzer, who's just given the keynote address for the spring meeting of AICHE. Bill is presently at the University of Wisconsin uh, with an appointment as a research professor in chemical and biological engineering at Wisconsin. Uh, also with appointment with chemistry and with Wisconsin Energy Institute. However, he came there last year from being uh, executive vice president and chief technology officer for Dow Chemical. And before that, 22 years at GE, where uh, I had met him when he was doing very interesting diamond development work. So he's seen a wide variety of technical and business topics. His talk, though, was titled the world needs engineering judgment. So, Bill, would you make a few explanatory remarks about the material that you covered there? Sure. I have never been more optimistic about the future of chemical mm -hmm. engineering or more convinced the world needs chemical engineering. So I think at the height of our pursuit of clean energy and water and new materials and healthcare, you know, chemical engineers understand how to close energy and mass balances. They understand reactor design. They understand thermodynamics and they understand financial analysis. And, and much of the world's goals is to try to separate from all the things that are possible what's really practical. And so my view is that the chemical engineering skills that we have, when applied appropriately, are a very effective screen to decide what are really viable options for society as we try to address these gnarly problems. Well, as CTO at Dow, you were responsible for the IP of the company, for venture capital and things like that. What personal experience, what professional experiences did you have that you can cite uh, as examples of using that engineering judgment? So I think the thing that you realize in your industry is that research is a privilege. It's not a right. Mm -hmm. And so you have to earn your ability to do research. And to earn means you've got to understand what will people pay for. And so in oftentimes we don't understand the, the importance of both marketing and engineering. Engineering defines what are costs going to be? What products are possible? And so we may have an aspirational goal, but unless you can reduce that to practice. And at Dow, we had several examples from alternative feedstocks, where I believe there's a massive amount of hype. Um, my probably most profound is that I believe we do desperately need to look for sustainable solutions, and alternative feedstocks has gotten a lot of attention. But we also, I'd say, the world is very well served by the chemical industry that we have right now. And so when we look at alternatives, we've got to understand why did we pick the solutions that we have today and why would we change? And when you look at uh, biology as a transformational tool, if you are in agriculture or you are in healthcare or specialty, if you need a chiral molecule, biological transformations are the way to do it. They're the most effective and they've been disruptive in those industries. But when you start talking about commodity chemicals or you know, sort of when things are priced in dollars per gram, then you can think about biological transformations. When you're talking about dollars per ton, you gotta understand biological organisms are mainly meant to live, and that biological feedstocks are not concentrated, and the products are often not concentrated. And the first thing we learn as chemical engineers is you don't want to loot feedstocks, and you don't want to loot product streams, because those are expensive. And when you're talking about commodities, things that basically you know, are sold for fuel value, you need to understand what's really practical versus what you might be able to do. Mm -hmm. So how did your education prepare you for that? Uh, your bachelor's and your, your doctoral degree from Illinois, that sort of study informed how you perceived things as well as the breadth of professional experience that you've had? You know, the most profound thing I think I could say is, I remember my first bird steward and lifeway class and shell balances and, and, my, and our thermal classes where we talked about the importance of control volumes. Where do you define a system? And, and I look at that today and, and I had an exchange with an automotive executive once who was just excited about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And I said, and he said, there's no emissions from this. This is great. And, and I said, where's the hydrogen going to come from? You know, there's no hydrogen mine. And I remember how we had to talk about the importance of drawing the control volumes right to get the right answer. And clearly, he drew his control volume around the car, not the globe. <laughs> and I think, you know, that uh, thermodynamics, I think, is probably the most important thing when you think about energy. They're in, you know, separable. But you don't appreciate that when you're necessarily learning about fugacity. But 
you know, if I look back on the idea of control volumes and shell balances and thermodynamics, I mean, they're the guiding principles of what you can actually afford to do, and especially when you talk about energy. Well, again, we very much appreciate the very well-attended keynote address that you give, and thank you for being here. Oh, thank you.